welcome to another episode of Three Men and a Bernina. We uh, found out recently who's not the dumbest person on the team. I'm second not the dumbest, and Wes, you lost that episode bad. Yeah, yeah, don't rub but, it and in. I only got five points for that tiebreaker, but uh, it was fun. Uh, and last week we uh, picked out our projects. That was that was really fun. I'm still sticking with that scrap crazy because I think it'll be the easiest thing I ever do. Uh, y'all still confident on what y'all are? Oh yes. On? I'm very excited for the bento box. I think that's going to be a lot of fun to put together. Well, I've already turned 20 once, so turning 20 <laughs> again should be easy. We have a very patient person working with us today. Her name's Christy. She is our creative director, and she is going to be working with us on learning how to use these machines. Weston's kind of ahead of us, like we've said, uh, and I, I don't know how to turn it on. Good luck, Christy. What so, if I sew my fingers together? Oh, uh, there's a first aid kit somewhere. Oh, and there's you can use a seam ripper for that. <laughs> he already knows. That's right. There you go. We welcome you to join along with us and uh, have some fun while we learn these things. We do the loop de loop and the floss. Okay, that's All right, so as a lot of you remember, on the first episode, I introduced myself as the store manager here, sales manager over Bernina in the front of the store. This young lady here is actually my Bernina specialist. She is actually going to inform you guys why we wanted to do the 435 <laughs> for a beginner's class. Really, it's the most foolproof, and if you've seen these guys, they need foolproof. So, the 435 is an awesome beginner's machine. It's lightweight, you can take it to classes. It's only 21 pounds, which clearly none of these men have a problem with that, but some of us do. It has a five and a half millimeter stitch width, so a lot of traditional quilters will tell you, gives them a tighter seam works better on their piecing. They just prefer that five and a half millimeter over nine millimeter. Threading is super, super simple. Start with your thread up here. It is numbered to show you where you're going. That's what we need. We need yes. step by step instructions. We need and pictures, arrows. we need diagrams. Oh, yeah. so you also have your bob <laughs> bobbin winding function right on top here. Turn on your little switch there and there's a little blade in there. So you can cut your thread right there. Michael, be careful. Because we don't want sharp objects around these guys so they can't have snips. So we have the blaze right on there. True. You have speed control here, traditional Bernina, total stitch control. You use your knobs to change the width and length of your stitches. Cool. Needle placement, your start stop mm -hmm. button. You've got all kinds of features in this little machine. It is a workhorse. So this machine is gonna set all of your tensions for you depending on the stitch that you select. So there's no thinking about it. You don't have a dial to try to dial in your tension and get things right where they need to be. It's gonna do the work for you. So once again, remember I said foolproof. Foolproof. Cool. Well, Erica, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. No and, problem. And uh, Christy's going to be the one to carry us forward on the, how to actually operate the thing. Good luck to so. Christy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried at all about this project. I'm, I'm still really excited. So this is the Bernina 435 awesome machine. We're going to just kind of take you through how to get started. First of all, what you'll want to do is make sure everything's plugged in. And then on the other side, there is a little switch. Power's You're just important. gonna want to oh, turn mm -hmm. the power on. So that doesn't turn it on? That does not turn it on. And we'll mm. talk about that in a few minutes. Mm. Oh, I thought the Berninas had a radio built into them or Bluetooth. That's what the antenna was for. Apparently not. Everybody gets really excited when they get their new Bernina and they just want to start sewing. If you're brand new to sewing or brand new to a Bernina, it's important to know how to thread it. And um, basically we got thread, which is awesome. There is two kinds of thread. There's a cross wound thread, which means when it's put on the spool, it kind of makes an X. Thank you. And then there is stack thread. So stack thread is, it's kind of uniform and it goes straight across. So there are two spool pins on here. The one that goes um, horizontal is for the cross wound. And this one, whoa, that one is for the stacked thread. Because it also, it also if picks you put up local radio stations. It does, definitely. <laughs> but if you do the stacked thread here, then it, it flows off better. This one the cross wound flows off better. So that's why Back we up. have two on the Berninas, which is fabulous. So you're using the cross thread on this one? Yes. Okay. You see how it goes? Boop, yep. Boop. Yep. It just kind of mm -hmm. crosses there. So that one will go here? Yes, okay. that one will go there. So we have to have a top thread, but we also have to have a bottom thread that is called your bobbin. So we're gonna put the thread on here in the spool cap. And then we're gonna put the bobbin on the bobbin winder. Metal side down. We're gonna take the end of our thread 
and we're gonna go right through here. If you were wanting a stacked one, there is a little metal catch right here that you would go through, okay? And then you're gonna take it over this winder, and it has arrows to kind of show you how. And then you're gonna go one, two, and three. Hit that thread cutter, and there you go. Ta-da! So what you're gonna do is take the bobbin, put it in the bobbin case, and again, it's metal side in. Maybe. Okay, I'll show you that one again, mm -hmm. and then it just pops right in there, and you're going to cut the end of the thread. And shut the pops door. In. It easy? just pops mm -hmm. in. I'll show you that in just a little bit, a little bit closer. Okay, so then we're gonna wind the machine. So what you're gonna do is take the thread tail, oh hold it in your hands just like this. We're kind of flossing it, basically. Good okay? hygiene, it's always important. And then you're gonna go here, up in here, there's a little slot. And um, like Erica said earlier, it is foolproof. There is one place it can go and there's extra guides on there. And then you do this little slot. There's one here at the bottom. Okay, and now we're gonna use the automatic threader, which is totally cool. So normally what I do is I take these two fingers and then I put this finger here. You're gonna pull down here and come across, and there you go. What? You mean I don't have to push that pull little bitty back, thread through that little bitty hole? Ready to go. Okay. Nope. A lot of the That's feet, awesome. some it's of the, the feet best. have a little groove in them too, so normally I just put that thread like right under the groove. Which, if it doesn't have a groove, just to get it under the foot, basically, ready to set. If it doesn't have a groove, then you can actually just take off the foot and kind of just move it under the needle, pull it out, put it back on. Okay. Huh. Awesome, there you go. We should be ready to sew now. See, she did a good job on mine. Y'all two gotta do it on yours. Oh uh, boy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take it out and see what y'all do. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay. When you take the thread out, you always want to cut it at the top. So, guys, somebody got scissors on them? I got a knife. Got some scissors okay. Right here. There we go. These are perfect. What you oh, want to do is just sorry. cut it right here. <laughs> Pull the tail out. You want everything going forward because if you try to pull it backwards, it might cause a problem or get jammed back in the machine. So everything needs to go in one direction. Let me just kind of go over the bobbin one more time, okay? So the bobbin is here. Push the case out. So here's our bobbin. And what we're gonna do is metal side in. Hey, there's some little slots here. So you see that slot, metal slot? You run it here, it goes all the way through here, and then that last little latch, it catches. What that does is provide tension so it doesn't go too fast because what the beauty of this machine is the top thread and the bottom thread are kind of moving at the same point so they make a really nice so that stitch. Okay. Attention just mm -hmm. like on a fishing pole. Yeah. Absolutely. You got to pay attention like it too. It That's in. true. Cut the thread, mm -hmm. leave the tail, close the door. We it, should be ready to stitch. Sweet. Threading isn't that hard. Okay, since we have the machine threaded, y'all all did a wonderful job. That's fabulous. We're going to put the slide on table on. The slide on table just gives more stability. If you were sewing like a pants leg or a sleeve or something, you would want this off for accessibility okay. in the whole like you could put your pants leg right here and stitch oh. it, which is kind of cool. So you're going to just snap that on. It just slides on super easy. And what you're going to do is you can choose a stitch which is on the front. This machine has a million kazillion stitches, but we're just doing a straight stitch, which the machine should default to. So when one you is. Flip it on, yes. So we put this under the foot. How do you raise that? Foot. There is a little lever right back here. Oh. Oh, boom, oh it's boom. magic. Boom. You know. Kind of awesome. Okay. So the nice thing about these machines is you can hit the foot pedal or on the very front of the machine, there is a stop start button. 
There's also a motor speed on the front of the machine. So that's the start cool. stop button. And this is your motor speed for these guys. We may want to turn it way down so they don't go too fast. So it's not Thank the volume you. control? It's not the volume I thought it was control. for the radio when you turned it on. So, so. It looks like it comes with a Bluetooth speaker back there. What you want to do is lower. So press your foot, lower it. With that little lever in the okay. back. So that's done. Okay. Then and then you just hit the gas. Don't push or pull the fabric. The feed dogs do everything that needs to happen, which is kind of cool. We turn your motor speed down. It's like way up on the motor <laughs> speed, actually. Okay. Yeah. This is your bobbin threaded. Okay. So, right. I don't know. Hit the foot, hit the foot pedal. And we turned way down. Okay, stop just a minute. <laughs> okay, let's go to Sean's machine now and see if he can do it. Well, I messed up. Over I don't here. I can see it because it's white thread. Come right over here. Let's see. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that little thread under the foot and get you a piece of fabric. And normally I just take this piece of fabric right here. It's absolutely fine. We want to double it. Nope, I did a mad bad job. But it's his first time like literally touching a machine. So, you know, I will, we'll give him that. And then you're gonna okay, well, lower. Let me take a look at it. The pressure foot. Lower the feet. Yes. It's time I put my foot down. Hit the acceleration. Oh, okay, okay, so okay, your rather. needle is still down. So you Ready? Go. Oh, that's what that does. And just let it happen. No! You don't have to move it. You don't have to push it. It is just going to happen. No! These dogs are just going to pull that fabric right through. It's pretty awesome. Wow. Okay. Okay. And now stitch. Oh. And stop. Okay. Going to hit that. Hit. Oh, wait. Hold on. Okay. Oh! <gasps> Sweet. So you just turn it like that? Turn it and keep going. Keep going. You always want to, if you're going to turn like that, you always want to stop with your needle down because that holds your position. Okay, stop. Now, okay. And we set his machine to stop automatically. Keep going. We're going to do something. Ta da! And there you go. And you can actually use that foot right there. So if you were going to do echo guide. stitching, you can use the edge of the foot as a guide. It's okay. like it's like mowing the yard. And just follow the line. Absolutely. Stop. And if you'll see on the foot too, right here, you see the front of that foot, that little indention, that should stop it about the same as oh, here. That's right. Yep. We overshot it just a smidge, but very close. It's all good. I'm new. I know. You're doing great. Stop it. Whoa. Right, right there. Yes. Heck yeah, Sean. You're a natural. Look. Love to see that. See that. Easy to sew a straight line so far. And if you get to the end and your foot's a little heavy, you can use that motor speed slide sure. right there to slow it down just a little bit if you want. Nice. That way you don't. Hey, you want to play? Run off. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I looked in mine, and I'm scared to look in mine. It's work on your thread. A little, Just little, little rough little bit in more. here. I popped it open because I noticed he, his was sticking a little bit, and you see that? That is what's known in the industry as a bird's nest. Not a lot of fun. So, pulling this out, this is what this is what happened on this. Um, and I have been told by a few wise people that if you're having issues on the bottom side of your fabric, it's usually the top side of the machine. It's a little ironic, but it's never really failed me. Um, this bobbin looks all in order, so we're going to throw that back in. But I'm going to take a look and see what Michael did threading this. He's going. That's pretty awesome. We're learning to sew. Yeah, learning has occurred. <laughs> it's kind of like teaching a kid the first letter in the alphabet. And you're like, good job, that's an A. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at you. Ha. You got it. You can reach under and push too. Oh, that's cool. Like this? Mm -hmm. You can do that. Mm. 
So like, it's just gone from down here at the needle, but it's up here at the top. You're not supposed to pull it backwards, but I don't know if there's any other way to do it. I have no idea. Okay. All right, this is kind of fun. I did enjoy the... That was fun. Next week we start working on this our project. This is learning how to, how to walk. I think I got this down. So once I figured the threading part out, Start next next uh, week. We're gonna start working on our project. So, <gasps> kind of so then everybody can see how not straight my quilt is gonna be. Yeah. Oh. Well, the humming of these Berninas is a nice sound to listen to. I did not thread my machine properly. Both these two did, but I think I know what I did wrong, and we'll quickly. No. Oh. What? Well, mm -hmm. I, I sold <laughs> most of this. So I'm happy about that. Next week, when we uh, start working on our projects, I'll know how to thread my machine. Thank y'all for joining us this week, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm I'm excited to see how Michael does when he's not kind of being led along by the hand, and 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 like handed the machine because Sean really did hand him the machine. I would say like. That was the thing. That was the thing that surprised me. Actually, was was how competent Sean was with threading that machine because he beat me, and uh, I won't forget it.